Welcome to Your Sport Swindon. Joined today by bo Swindon boxing trainer Rich Barnan. How are you doing, Rich? Yeah, very well. Cold. Cold. Very well. You, you just come back from the Caribbean, so you missed the um, press launch uh, for the next show in December. But exciting news that you know all, all the boxers that you train can be busy in December and, and busy in 2016 as well. Your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's great news. Um, I wanted them out in December because I felt it's um, important um, rather than waiting until next year, which I think the first show next year is penciled in sort of sometime in February, to then have a break from October through till February is just not it's not good enough for, for them. You know, I need them to be active. So um, when it was announced that uh, there was going to be a show in December, it's fantastic news. So, yeah, really happy with that. One of the talking points at the press conference was obviously Ryan Martin and a potential fight with, with Garvey Kelly. What's your thoughts on that now? I know we've spoken briefly about it before, but, um, you know, kind of when do you see, see that happening from the point of view of your boxer? Well, it's becoming a joke now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We had the press conference for the October show, and obviously I'd said some bits, Paddy had said some bits. Paddy gets hold of the mic, says his thing, and doesn't give the mic to me to, for me to be able to reply. He's just like, this is ridiculous. You want it all your own way, Paddy. Well, it ain't happening. It's as simple as that. Paddy's now, he keeps changing it late next year and then he said oh no it can happen in the spring and now this latest video I see whilst I'm on holiday December 2006 well it's not happening simple as that it is not happening December 2006 do you know what I mean why, yeah. why is it happening in December 2006 because you haven't got confidence in your boxer because he needs more experience and don't come at me saying they both need to do this and no they don't not at all it's not a history fight for Swindon it's two Swindon boxers getting it on it happens every week with white collar you know Two professional boxers getting it on for a title, a meaningful title. Yeah, okay, maybe a bit of Swindon history can be created, but let's be honest with you. Is that ever going to happen? No, it's not. So it either happens on the show in March, March the 5th, or it doesn't happen at all. You know exactly what Paddy will come back and say, you're not his manager, this, that and the other. <laughs> no, boxing management works differently to normal everyday business management. The boxer employs the manager not the other way around. So that, no fight can be negotiated, agreed on, terms, etc., without the boxer being involved and agreeing to it all. So all this December 2006, well, that's maybe what Paddy wants, but I'm telling you now, it's not going to happen because it's not what Ryan wants. Ryan wants it as soon as possible. Um, there's enough hype, there's enough build. You don't have to build it up for another year. It's been talked about for nearly six months now. And if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen... I would say it has to happen in March. December next year, for Ryan Martin, if things go to plan, should be either fighting for or already fought for an English title. No disrespect whatsoever to Garvey, because I like Garvey. Garvey's a lovely kid. He's, he's got a great personality. He's a good boxer. Can't see Garvey get into that position. In, in professional boxing and that's not being disrespectful at all maybe you will he's not in the same level as Ryan I think Garvey knows that himself Paddy knows that that's why he wants another year to try and develop Garvey into that now again without being disrespectful is he going to keep feeding Garvey bums to keep him unbeaten for another 12 months maybe who knows who knows what he wants to do but Ryan's not there Ryan's beyond it already. Ryan is fighting and wants to fight guys now with winning records. We are looking at rankings. We're not looking at a, a Swindon derby. We're looking at rankings. We're looking at going up. Southern area title, win that, defend it. Go then for an eliminator for the English title or go into an English title fight. That's where we're at. You know, we're not looking at, okay, well, we just bum around for another 12 months and fight Joe Bloggs here, Joe Bloggs, blah, 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 blah. And then build up, oh, now we're going to fight Garvey, an exciting fight in December. It's not an exciting fight at all. 99% of boxing fans in Swindon already know what the result will be. I know what the result will be. I'm sure Paddy Deep Down does. That's what I mean. I, I'm not going to say anything bad about Garvey, because Garvey's a great kid, and I wish him all the luck in the world. Getting in the ring with, with Ryan Martin, he gets knocked out clean within two or three rounds. And that's not being disrespectful. That's being truthful. Everybody says it. Nobody says it to anybody's face, but they all say it. You know, I don't want that to happen to Garth. I genuinely do not want that to happen to Garth because he doesn't deserve that. He needs to go. Look, he got stopped on his feet by Fahim 
Okay. What do you think Ryan's going to do? He got stopped on his feet before he got knocked out. And it was a shame. But there's only one person in that fight winning that fight. You know, Garvey may have changed it. Maybe. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan gave for him a boxing lesson, took him to part, won the fight convincingly. The same, every fight's different, every boxer's different, every boxer fights differently every fight. Ryan fought for England. Ryan fought internationally for England. Ryan won so many different titles for England. He won the junior ABAs, he won, the, he won everything. I don't think Garvey even fought for the Western counties in the amateurs, you know. There's levels in boxing, there really is levels in boxing. And he's just not at that level. So, you know, why as his coach, his manager, why would you want to put Garvey in with Ryan Martin? If I was there, I would not want to keep him as far away as possible. I really, really would. That's what you have to do with certain fighters with those abilities. You think, not yet. You know, if we got a last minute phone call, not that it would ever happen, that an opponent dropped out for Kell Brook. Ah, Ryan Martin's as well. Wait, yeah, Ryan Martin. No. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Not at this stage. It just wouldn't happen. And that's where you have to look at these things. It, it's, it's, it's a business and it's management and you have to do what's right for your boxer at the time. In 12 months' time, Ryan's going to be in a whole different place in rankings. You know, hopefully he's going to be in the top 10 at least. Will Garth, realistically, no, I don't think he will. You know, Paddy won't put him in with people with winning records. Probably won't put him in with a 50 50 record. We want minimum 50 50 record opponents, if not opponents with winning records now. I've looked at potential opponents. You know, there's guys out there, Dean Byrne, for example, who fought a couple of weeks ago in Dublin for, um, for well, I can't remember the title, I think it was the Irish well, away title, whatever. Love to have Dean Byrne, mm. you know, early next year for Ryan. He's been in there with everybody. But what I've seen, he can beat him, and he can beat him convincingly. That'll shoot him right up the rankings. Pete Madonna, who beat Dean Byrne. Pete Madonna didn't show me anything I'd be worried about. Put him straight in with Ryan. You know, these are the kind of fights that we want. You know, we're looking at serious fights. And I'm not saying the fight with Garvey isn't serious, but it's just not in the plans at all, you know. Yeah, Paddy caught the ump with me, saying I'll call, calling out Ryan. Well, okay, let's put another. You're not calling out Ryan all the time. It's a bit of an obsession because you're always talking about Ryan and Gar Ryan and Gar. I'm not talking about Garvey every single time. I'm coming into reply now because I gave an interview with the advert after the press conference because Paddy wouldn't let me speak. Don't think they ever printed it. Probably because some of the things I'm said, like what I'm saying now, it's just talk. That's all it is. Ryan doesn't need another five, six, seven fights. Ryan's ready now. He'd be ready in the next fight or the next fight. Happens in March. You could probably say it could happen in April if there's a swing show later. But that's when it happens, otherwise we're not interested because we will be going further forward. You know, the Board of Control have already asked me and Ryan if he would like to challenge for a southern area as well. We didn't approach them, they asked us. We said, yeah, we would be interested in that. You know, mm -hmm. Tamuka that holds it at the minute, he's fighting a couple of weeks' time, I think it is. Mm -hmm. We'll see what he does. That. I think what Tamuka will probably do is relinquish that to then go on to the English. That becomes vacant. We then lobby and sort of say, now it's a vacant title, can we put Ryan Martin forward for it? Will they then turn around and say, well, yeah, it's, uh, we'll sanction that fight for Ryan versus Garvey? I don't think so. They'll throw another name on it, we'll look at that name, and if it, if it yeah. makes sense to go there, we'll go there and we'll fight that. You know, it's... <laughs> I'm just... Each time I see it now, it's like it's always mentioning it. I'm just like, I'm bored of it. Ryan's bored of it now because the fight it really doesn't mean anything at all. And now that that may sound disrespectful, Paddy might get the arse with it or whatever because he's trying to build it up to, you know, obviously there's monetary value, etc. In it, yeah, fair enough. Sooner rather than later because we're not hanging around. We're not, if it had to happen, for example, in December, the only reason it would happen in December would be if it's a warm-up fight for Ryan to go ahead for something else. That is the only reason why that fight would happen in December, as a warm-up. And again, that's not meaning to sound disrespectful, but that's fact. That's how it is. And I'm really sorry, Garb, if, uh, if it's come across that way. And I, I don't mean it's come across that way. I'm just talking fact. At the end of the day, Ryan, Ryan's, Ryan's just on a different level. Yeah. you know. And that, that's not 
disrespecting anybody because there are other guys like if we were offered the Southern Area title fight against Tamuka at this moment in time I'd probably turn it down because I think Tamuka's on a different level to Ryan at this moment in time mm. which fair enough I'm man enough to admit that but in six, eight months time if Tamuka's still got it and then we get offered it then that could be a different story but right at this moment in time I'd say Ryan's not quite ready for Tamuka you know because Tamuka's been there I think Tamuka's on 12, 13 fights right now and he's been in with some good guys. <clears throat> he's gone up those levels. You know, he's gone through what you need to go to progress, not keep fighting people with losing records. You know, like I say, he fought for him. We've got 50 50 ish record for him. But he wins. He's tough. Ryan completely outclassed him. So we're looking at the next opponent. I don't know who we're going to have on, in December. And it might just be a ticking over fight. I don't know. But certainly after that, the next opponent has got to have a minimum 50-50 record or has been in with British champions, English champions. You know, he's, he's got a good pedigree. Hopefully, he's got more wins than losses. You know, so that, then we go for the next stage after that and we go for the next stage. That's the fights that we're looking for, for Ryan. It's career progression. Not going back. You know, Garvey's record at this moment in time is respectable. It's a good record, OK? It's only that one loss. So therefore... I think if it's going to happen, it makes sense to make it happen in March. Beyond March, I can't see any sense for it happening whatsoever. And, you know, it, who, who's going to want to see it after Ryan's knocking on that southern area door or has fought for it and won it? Mm. You know, I, don't, I, I think the interest is there now, you know, and it can be built up. They're both fighting in December the 20th. Let's hope they both win, which I'm sure they will do in December the 20th. Possibly both on again in February somewhere. Great, another one. Then let's have it yeah. in March. Then it's done. Then we can move on and do whatever else we need to do with our own boxers, careers and whatever, and just move on from it. You know, Talking Christmas next year, December next year, honestly, it's a joke. It really is a joke. And I know Paddy ain't going to like it, but that's just the way it is. It doesn't go all your own way You know, at the end of the day. You do what you do, we do what we do. If we have to meet at somewhere, we meet, we negotiate. Yes, I'm not his manager, I'm not a promoter of a show, but if you want to talk about a fight, seriously talk about a fight, you also need to sit down with the trainer, which is me. You need to sit down with Brian, the boxer, because we're the ones that will say yes or no, you know, at the end of the day, and I am his trainer. Keith is his manager. Ryan is the boss. So Ryan sort of says, yeah, I'll do that then. Or, no, I'm not doing that then. You know, that's where the buck stops at the end of the day. Let me throw this at you. Both lads, very young, very early in their career. Yeah. There's surely no reason why Garvey can't, you know, get four or five wins under his belt, same as Ryan doing it. Then they possibly could meet in December. Do you, do you not see the potential for that at all, them both getting to the same level? Yeah, if Paddy's man's up, and puts, uh, puts Garvey back in with guys with at least 50-50 records or with winning records and keeps him unbeaten until then. Then it potentially could happen if his career goes the same way as Ryan's. That could happen. Don't think Paddy would do that, though. I really don't. Or he might do that, but what if Garvey loses? What if? Yeah, what if Ryan loses? That's fair enough. You know, That's a fair question. That's the thing. As soon as that one of those situations happen, then it's back to the drawing board again. You know, a loss at the end of the day isn't a career ender at all. A loss, you know, if anything, can help. It really can help. Obviously. Well, Garvey's come back well from from the defeat that he had. Yeah, he has come back very well. You know, and fair play to him. You know, he's he's gone back and to Paddy. They've worked on things. They've got things right, and you know, going ahead forward again. But. Again, it's, it's still about levels. It is about levels, you know, and he's it's, it's very unfair. It's an unfair position to really be in on, on, on this on this subject because, you know, I've just always come back to golf, not on the. I've seen Garvey spying with Ryan, and Ryan's done whatever he's wanted to do, you know, when he wanted to do it. And that was before I even was involved with Ryan. You know, I watched it. Paddy very recently asked for sparring, which I was up for doing. And there's only one reason why he wants a sparring. 
you know, apart from it's good sparring, he, he wants to watch Ryan. He wants to see and this, that, and the other. And, you know, yeah, we'll come down and spar. You're going to get one or two Ryan Martins coming down. You're going to get a Ryan Martins not going to show you anything, you can go through bits and pieces. Or it'll be a Ryan Martin that will come in, just smash him to pieces, and won't be invited, invited back again. That's how you do it, you know. We'd rather go if we, if we spar, just go and just not really show anything, mess around, just, you know, pick some shots, move, and just, just box, you know. Because I know if Ryan went in there, and sparred hard or sparred as hard as what he fights that fight would never ever ever happen it wouldn't ever be talked about again so and you know this isn't about me either Ryan has come to me I'm just developing what he's got Ryan Ryan's skills are obviously a lot of it's natural a lot of it is down to the coaches at Walcott yeah. you know it's not down to me you know, the coaches at Walcott have done masses with him. You know, we, we know how good those coaches at Walcott are. Um, you know, incredible, you know, the boxers that they turn out. That's instilled in Ryan. I'm tweaking Ryan. I'm doing certain things with Ryan. Same with what I'm doing with Danny as well. Tweaking what they've got to just add to their fighting potential. Um, so it's already instilled, you know, what they've got. They both of those guys are just on different levels, you know, you know, and that's no no credit to me. I'm just bringing out what I feel can be the very best of them. Um, they've got they've got fantastic sparring, you know. It was up with Sam Eggington before Sam fought um, recently. You know, the spars were fifty fifty. Yeah. You know, that Danny as well when Danny got in there, and Sam Eggington's a big welterweight, a very very big welterweight. British Commonwealth and WPC international champion, you know, they held their own. They want they want this to go back and go back and go. Again, I'm going to mention it, but could Garvey do that? You know, we were sparring yesterday with Joe Hughes, English champion, who's defending his English title on the fifth of December. They they did six rounds each with him. Was it fifty fifty? Yeah, it was fifty fifty. We're going back Wednesday to do it again. Again, could Garvey do that? Don't think so. You know, we get out, we're getting asked for sparring all the time. Quality, hard sparring. I will put my fighters in with guys that are, that have been there and done it and are, are a different level, you know. That's how you progress. That's how you do things, you know. And this is what these guys are doing. They're getting in there with, with guys that have been there, done it, and hold belts, already hold belts. And they hold their own with them. You know, very competitive spars. I've never yet seen either Danny or Ryan be beating up in a spa, mm. not seen it, you know. That's that's what we're talking about, and it is just it's just like every single thing. Paddy, change the record, focus on something else, please, you know. Unless you want to man up and put Garvey in the ring with Ryan on March the fifth at the Oasis, otherwise I'm telling you now it is not going to happen, unless by some twist of fate, the direction that he takes Garvey in ends up Garvey wins the Southern Area title or you know or, or wins the English title or something like that then we'll talk then we'll look at it but until that point we we'll fight in March get it done we can progress with our own career and go go forward on that one but you know it's just it's all this talk it's all this media talk it's, you know you, I go away for 10 days and that's all I see or so, don't blame the media yeah <laughs> I think you incite it <laughs> But it, and well, that, taking your fair. trainer's cap off for yeah. a second, yeah. do you accept that you know Ryan against Garvey would be a great, exciting fight for the Swindon fans? It'd be a very quick and clinical fight <laughs> for the fans, but the fans like that. So you can't even give me that. It's a good fight for the town. It's it's a good fight for the town, but come on, it's a good, it's a good fight for the town. But what in the whole? What's it mean? What's it prove? Because. People that know both boxers know there's one winner, you know. And again, Paddy, please don't get me wrong. There is not one ounce of me that would take the fight lightly and just think, yeah, Ryan's just got to turn up. We would train, train, train diligently to make sure that it's a clinical finish and it would be clinical. Ryan, you would see a different Ryan Martin to what you've already seen because, yeah, Swindon Derby fight, you've got to perform. You've got to really, really perform. And I would expect Garvey to do the same. 
but it would be a very focused, a very dangerous Ryan Martin that gets into there. You know, Ryan Martin is a lovely, lovely kid. You know, he's, I'm old enough to be his dad. You know what I mean? But like, as Lee is, you know, be very, very proud to have him as, as your son. Because he is a lovely individual. He is, he's happy, he's polite, well-mannered, he's calm, this, that and the other. Put a pair of gloves on him. He is vicious, he's aggressive, and he just wants to take you out, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of Ryan. It's the same with Danny. You put the gloves on these kids, and they, their persona changes. They really change it. It goes into that that fight mode. A bit like Jamie Cox. You know, mm-hmm. Jamie's... A, I've got so much time for Jamie. He's awesome, and he will win a world title, and he deserves it. Put a pair of gloves on him, though, and he's nasty, he's aggressive, and he just wants to hurt you. That's the quality of a boxer. I'll go back to Garvey. Garvey is all of that, but I've never seen Garvey change when he puts a pair of gloves on. You know, I think Garvey is too nice. He's a very, very nice... You know, he's, he's a great, great lad, you know, but I don't think he's got that nasty mean streak in him. No disrespect at all, because so many boxers don't have that nasty mean streak in them. I'd probably say Frank Bruno is one of them, mm. you know. If Frank Bruno had a bit of nastiness and a viciousness in him, perhaps he could have won that world title a lot earlier than what he did, but I think he lacked that bit of aggression. These guys, Danny and Ryan, they've got that in them, you know. Get in the ring, that bell goes. They are just focus on one thing, and that's hurting you and taking you out. You know, if they can't hurt you and take you out, they both have that same boxing brain that go back to, okay, I'm just going to give you a boxing lesson. Yeah. So it is just like, can we stop talking and can we just pencil this fight in? Like we say, March done, dusted. Let's fight in December. Maybe also fight in February. But then let's just work towards March because. Unless Garth's going to go and win a title, a meaningful title, an English-based title, before December, it ain't going to happen, I'm telling you now, because we will be in a different place by then. You know, We will be looking at different opponents. We'll be hopefully looking at opponents within that top 10 of the, of the British rankings by that stage. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had discussions very recently with some very big promoters that are on TV about Ryan fighting certain fighters, you know, because they've approached and said, Oh, have you got wet waves? So, yeah, I have. They won't take the fight. Well, you know, we weren't offered the fight, but there was an opponent they, that they required for the Anthony Joshua um, uh, undercard on the 12th of December at the O2. I put Ryan's name forward for it. Yep, still focused on fighting on the 20th of December, but we could have gone in because I looked at the kid. The kid's 2-0 and o and a prospect. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that fight. So I know Ryan, Ryan would have beat him. Mm. Came back, they don't want the fight. And they also come out, oh, it's only a four rounder. Perhaps we can take it at a later stage when it's a six rounder. Okay, yeah, well, we'll do that. You know, because that's that's where we're, we're at with Ryan. You know, we know what we can do at this stage. Yeah, he's only had six fights. Ryan doesn't need 10 to 12 fights that Paddy's talking about. And Paddy knows that. You know, Paddy's a very good salesman. Okay, but we need to be a bit more realistic in what we're talking about here. And we really do. This this is this is a business. We're talking about kids' careers on here. We're, we, there's lots involved. Lots and lots involved. December 2016. Let's let's focus at one fight at a time. Let's get this fight, if it's ever going to happen, done in March. And then we can carve our own career paths after that. And then if later on in the future, Garve holds a title... Maybe they could meet again, for example. You know, if it's going to happen, be an even bigger show in, in Swindon. Yeah, it's an interesting fight for Swindon. It'll sell you a lot of exciting, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take interesting, to be fair. Is it going to be a toe-to-toe war? I don't know. I haven't got a crystal ball like you. <laughs> My crystal ball is very clear. <laughs> Get your opinions on the street in the boxing fraternity. Is it going to be a 50-50 fight? Is it going to be a toe-to-toe war? No. Is Ryan Martin going to come out, be on the front foot, putting pressure on and hitting Garvey with very hard shots every time he hit him? Yeah. Is Garv going to be able to handle the pressure, the intensity and the power of Ryan Martin? I don't know until it happens. Mm. My crystal ball says, nah. 
might do for a round or two if he runs and covers up well. If Garvey opens up and fires back, good night, you know. And that's harsh, I know, but that's that's the only way I can feel it. Because like I say, without repeating myself, we will train diligently for it and there will be no stone unturned on that because if that fight happens, which I don't ever think it will happen anyway, I just think it's talk. If it happens, Ryan will be in devastating condition. Devastating condition. He's always in the gym. He doesn't ever miss a session at all. You know, he was in the gym on the Tuesday following his last fight after an eight-rounder. He's back in, itching to go again. So, over to you, Paddy, for your next move. <laughs> you know, let's talk about me not knowing anything, me talking this, me talking that, me saying that you call him. A... It's a case of focus on something else, please. You know, why don't you talk about the, the other big potential fight, which would have more meaning because one of them holds a title, Luke Watkins and Lawrence Bennett. Lawrence has got a title, he's got the Southern area, you know, Lawrence is in big fights at this moment in time, Lawrence is doing fantastic with his career, has he had 10 fights yet? No, I don't think he has, but look what he's done with his career, that's a huge fight, Luke Watkins against Lawrence Bennett for, I don't know if he's, if, I think they've sanctioned, yeah, the, potentially, uh, if he beats Matty Askin, it could be for an English title, yeah, and I think they've both had the same amount of fights, there you go, that's a huge fight, which would, generate more excitement, potentially more ticket sales than Garvey versus Ryan. For the sole reason, everybody knows what the result will be of Garvey versus Ryan. Who knows what the result between Luke and uh, Lawrence would be, because that would be a fantastic matchup. And that's a genuine 50-50 fight, two big guys in their hometown. There you go, focus on that one. Because that's, a, that's an interesting one. But that one's gone very quiet, hasn't it? It was talked about for a while, and then never happened. So why not talk it again, you know? You know, Lawrence has got new management and new promoters now. You know, that could be a big London fight, or Steve Goodwin could potentially win the first piece and bring that fight to Swindon. Who knows? You yeah. know, that's the interesting one, I think. But, you know, that's the only reason why I need to have my say on it, because it's all I ever hear. Garvey versus Ryan, Garvey versus Ryan, Garvey versus Ryan. Right, if it's that important, let's get it on sooner rather than later because it's not that important to us. Do you know what I mean? It really isn't our focus and we will move on very quickly. So money where your mouth is, Pad, put them together in March. Talk to us first though so we know what you want, how you want it, you know, whether you want a six round, eight round, whatever you want. But come and talk to us with Keith, sit us all down and say you know, that's all I'm saying, you know, if, if you want it. But after March, we ain't interested. We really are not interested. We've got other things to focus on and work towards and win. Okay, well, on that note, we'll, we'll call it a wrap. Thanks for joining us, Rich, and we will await Paddy's response, I think. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, he's going to respond and probably say I'm talking rubbish and, you know, typical Paddy response, on it, you know, but... <laughs> You know, it's, what else? I've got no one else to come back to because it's all, all, all Paddy, all Paddy, all Paddy, all Paddy. Is a case of like, you know, he may not like me, may not have any respect for me, may this that, and the other because he's been at that at the top with George and Eamon fight for world titles, and so, you know, it's a case of like, we're here now, we're here now. We're talking about two of our fighters that are the same weight, both from Swindon. Forget any of that. You know, Paddy knows where I'm coming from on it. Paddy knows I'm not talking rubbish on it. You know, he knows that he would have to really prepare Garvey like no other before. And I hope he does. I'm sure he will do, you know. Unless you want to come in with two sledgehammers in your hands. I don't think it's going to make any <laughs> difference, if I'm honest with you. And I'm not being cocky, because like I said, the work's already been done with Ryan. And that that's down to Walcott, you know, down to Harry Scott, Dave Vasey and the team down there. They've they've installed in Ryan what he's got. Now, I'm just tweaking it and I'm just developing what he's already got. But the talent that he's got is incredible. He's the, ta the talent is, you know, what Jamie Cox has got. Jamie's, Jamie's progressed further in his career, obviously with age and, and, and the timeline. Ryan will do the same. You know, Jamie's an incredible fighter. Incredible fighter that he's going to win that world title, you know. So... 
that's that's the ultimate aim, you know. And but we'll look at that one fight at a time. But between us, we've got a career path in mind, what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to achieve it, and I'll be be honest with you, Garvey doesn't really feature in it. But if it's a fight that everybody wants to see in Swindon, let's get Christmas out of the way, and let's get it on in March. End of. Okay.